Good evening and welcome. It's my privilege to introduce our speaker tonight. Her name is Barbara O'Neill. How many were here this afternoon at her session? Very good. And uh, I think there's more here even tonight. Uh, Barbara is from New South Wales, Australia. She trained and worked as a psychiatric nurse at North Ride Psychiatric Hospital in North Ride, New, New South Wales. She obtained a diploma in naturopathy in 1994 and later in 2005 as a nutritionist. Barbara's real healing success springs from the knowledge of the body's ability to heal itself and then working with the body to achieve the healing response. We will learn more about Barbara's background and personal testimony tomorrow morning at 9.30. But, and uh, she is married to Michael O'Neill, and combined they have eight children. In 2003, they relocated to Bellbrook, New South Wales, where they started their new venture, Misty Mountain Health Retreat. Uh, we're very appreciative to her uh, to come all this, this way to share some of her knowledge and bring us the simple and powerful uh, laws of health to help us, enable us to live longer, healthier, and happier lives. If you would like to support her ministry, uh, on the way out, there's going to be offering plates in the back. And if you want to uh, write a check, you write the check to uh, Greenville Seventh Adventist Church, and then at the end of her uh, sessions, that money will be transferred to her for her ministry. Uh, so don't forget, tomorrow morning at 9.30, uh, we'll start again, and tonight I believe the title is uh, DNA and uh, True Cause of Disease. So with that, I want to begin with a word of prayer. So let's bow, your heads, bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your uh, blessings of breath and life, and we uh, thank you that uh, Barbara made it here safely. We ask that you fill uh, her and, with the Holy Spirit and knowledge and wisdom and, and rec uh, allow her to recall to memory the things that she has learned through the years. We also ask that you uh, impress us with uh, things that might not only influence our own health, but those that uh, we have come in contact with. So we ask your blessing tonight and uh, be with us, and we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Welcome everyone to our, our series tonight. I'd like to begin with something that Moses told the children of Israel. And I believe that the same message is for us today. And it's found in Exodus 15, 26. If you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and do that which is right in his sight and give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, then I will put none of these diseases upon thee that I put upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. That's the true cause of disease. <laughs> Notice what God says. If you diligently hearken, there's a, there's a listen, and do that which is right in his sight. What is right in his sight? His commandments and give ear to his commandments and keep all of his statutes. Is that the true cause of disease? And b by the way, what are these diseases that he put upon the Egyptians? Well, archaeologists today have dug up Egyptian bones and because of the equipment they have today, they've tested them and found out that they had the diseases that we have today. They had osteoporosis, they had arthritis, they had heart disease, they had cancer. They, they actually had the diseases that we are having today because they are lifestyle diseases. What does lifestyle diseases mean? Um, broken law, broken God's law of what he says we should do. That's where are we have to diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord our God. Does Ellen White say this? She does. In page 127 of the Ministry of Healing, Ellen White says, the only hope of better things is the education of people in the right principles. These are the statutes. These are the
true. Now, the good news is that is so cheap. <laughs> that is in, in reach of every single human being. Medicine has a few theories today on the true cause of disease. I call them the two Gs, the gene theory and the germ theory. I'd like to have a look at the true role of genes and the true role of germs. Are they the true cause of disease? Well, the whole world was turned upside down a couple of years ago over a germ, is that right? The whole world was turned upside down. If ever we wonder how the whole world will wonder after the beast, we know more wonder. We saw it. This just wasn't a pocket here or there. So let's come back to the true cause of disease. Are the genes the true cause of disease? The fact is that genetics loads the gun, but it is lifestyle that pulls the trigger. We're back to diligently hearkening to the voice of the Lord thy God. And did you know that the genes are talked about in the Bible? It's the best medical book that we have. And we find it in Psalm 139. And I think we all know Psalm 139 verse 14 very well. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvellous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well. And I think one of the most marvellous is the DNA. 1953, it made headlines in the newspaper, Secret of Life had been discovered. Two scientists, Watson and Crooks, had been able to unravel the DNA. And I'm sure we've all seen drawings of the DNA. 23 chromosomes from our mother and 23 chromosomes from our father. There's a lot of information in this DNA. In fact, if you were to put all the information in this DNA into alphabetical language, it would, and fill paperback books, it would stack to the moon and back a few times. I can hardly get my mind around that information. And the psalmist said, I will praise you for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. He didn't know that. <laughs> Whoa. just fix myself up. <laughs> he didn't know what I've just told you and what I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the DNA. And all the information that makes you and me who we are, our height, I'm only five foot two and a half because I don't have six foot two. <laughs> Parents. <laughs> so yeah, there's a great deceiver out there who wants it all possible to prevent us diligently hearkening to the voice of the Lord our God. My heart is almost back to beating normally. <laughs> <laughs> when I was in Tennessee, you might have remembered, um, his name was Brother Moses, and I was speaking for him quite a few years ago, he's passed now, and when he picked me up at the airport, he stood up and he just kept going. Six foot ten. And his son is six foot six. Why isn't his son six foot six? Because his mother's five foot four. <laughs> I was in Ireland last year and I was with a, giving meetings with a man who was six foot eight and I met his 18 year old son who was six foot six. Whoa, there's a photo of me in between them and my son said, who's that? I said, that's me. <laughs> That time, the, it's all in our genes. And don't we do it with our brothers and our sisters, our aunts and our uncles, our grandparents? She's got the uncle's nose, she's got the mother's eye, it's all in the DNA. And nothing I can do can change the fact that I'm five foot two and I have blue eyes. And I still have brown hair, even though I'm in my late 60s, because my mother had brown hair and my father had dark hair, both when they died. It's in the genes. So nothing I can do can change that. But my mother died at 51, a cripple in a wheelchair with rheumatoid arthritis. I have some inherited genes towards that. And in our Polders lecture today, I touched on a few things that are helping me to manage that, and also lifestyle and diet. So my mother died a cripple in a wheelchair with rheumatoid arthritis. You probably notice I'm not a cripple, I'm not in a wheelchair, and I'm still alive. Because genetics may load the gun, but it is lifestyle pulls the trigger. My poor mother did not know what was pulling her trigger. But I do know. And I praise God that even though we are born with weaknesses in the genes, 
We can manage that. It's called epigenetics. You might have heard of it. The effect of lifestyle, the effect of diet on our genes. You can switch your genes on or off by diligently hearkening to the voice of the Lord thy God and doing that which is right in his sight, giving ear to his commandments and keeping all his statutes. Or you can turn those genes another way by breaking those basic laws. So why did I mention Psalm 139? We've done verse 14. Let's go to verse 15, where it says, My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret, curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. I carried six babies. I didn't know what was going on in there. I didn't know if I was going to have a boy or a girl. We were curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being imperfect. In my book were all my members written, which in continuance were being fashioned, when as yet there were none of them. When that baby came out, that baby's perfectly formed. It was being, it was being fashioned continually inside my womb. Doesn't every parent look to see the sex, look to count the fingers and the toes? When the baby's born, because you don't know, you can't see, you don't know what is in there. But notice that second part of the verse. In fact, I'll do the whole lot again and listen carefully. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret, curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being imperfect. Yet being imperfect, indicating that the time would come when human beings weren't being made perfect. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being imperfect. In thy book were all my members written. See, our members, they're all written here. They're all written in the DNA. And we know that God has a book. He has a few books. It doesn't have to be a very big book, because all it has to have in it is our DNA. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret, curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being imperfect. In my book, in thy book, were all my members written, which in continuance were being fashioned, when as yet there were none of them. So the formula of how we are made is in the DNA. And our body's constantly being remade. Do you know we have new eye cells every one to two days? New cells that line the gut every three to five days? New skin uh, every month? New bones every three months? New liver every six weeks? Praise God that we're constantly being remade. So if we're constantly being remade, why don't we get better? Why don't we heal? We're being remade according to the formula. So if the formula's not right, the cell will not be made right. So damage is happening to the DNA. But isn't there enzymes that are continually running up and down, healing any glitch or damage? Yes, there are. But if the nutrients to make those enzymes are deficient, can you see the enzymes are going to be deficient? Hippocrates, 400 years BC, Hippocrates, called the father of medicine. He said, let food be your medicine and medicine be your food. That's got something to do with it and that is one of the laws of health. Isn't that true? Nutrition. So what I want to look at is what causes damage in the DNA? And you know, Newton's third law of motion states that to every action there's an equal and an opposite reaction. There's always a reason. Rudyard Kipling, he's a poet, famous poet. He even wrote a poem on it. I'll give you the first stanza. He said, I have six trusty serving men. They taught me all I know. Their names are what, why, when, where, how, and who. Do you take them with you everywhere you go? Because I believe everyone should be their own doctor. Because only you know your history, only you know what you've been through. And that has a lot to do with the way we are today, what's happening in our body today. Sometimes our history indicates some damage that was done to the DNA. Sometimes damage was done even before we were born. Bruce Lipton, he's, a, he's an author and a speaker. He claims that 
parents are the genetic engineers of their children. Because a lot of the things we do before we even conceive are affecting the DNA. So let's have a look at what causes damage in the DNA. 92%, the research is showing today, 92% of DNA damage is caused by a mineral deficiency. A mineral deficiency? How could that be? Let me show you how that could be. The outside strands of the DNA are made up of polysaccharides. Polysaccharides simply means many sugars. And just about everything we eat is made up of many sugars. That's the outside strands. The inside bands is made up of amino acids. And amino acids is a breakdown from the protein that we eat. That's the inside strands. And the glue that glues all this together is minerals. So can you see that if a person is mineral deficient, they're not going to be glued together very well. 92% of DNA damage caused by a mineral deficiency. But today, many people are eating better than they did, say, in the 1940s, a much more varied diet. So what's the problem? In his book, The Calcium Lie, Dr. Robert Thompson, interesting story, Dr. Robert Thompson, he was a GP, getting frustrated because people weren't getting better, about to get out of medicine, but he reassessed, because it takes a long time <laughs> to become a medical doctor. He decided to do a nutrition course. He said his eyes were opened. And he realised the role that nutrition played in the running of the human body. And he shows in his book, The Calcium Lie, it's a good read, he shows that 50 years ago there was twice as, much, t twice as many minerals in the soil as there is today. So if the soil's deficient, the plant's deficient, and the human that eats that plant is going to be deficient. Now if someone lives on fast food, if I'm on film I don't say the names of them, but I think we know them all. We just have to drive down the highway, is that right? You see the fast food shops. There's not many minerals in that food. But there are people today who are eating fruits and vegetables every day because the highest source of minerals is your vegetables and the highest source in the vegetable kingdom is the greens. They say to me, Barbara, what do we feed you? I say, greens and beans. I love greens and beans. Give me greens and beans. <laughs> the greens are very high in minerals and when you cook them, you don't lose them. Unless you throw the water away that you cooked them in. So we're getting people who are even eating their fruits and vegetables every day and yet showing a mineral deficiency. That's why organic fruits and vegetables are so important today. And the more people that buy f organic, the more will be available. It's uh, demand and supply, isn't it? Let me give you an illustration. One organic tomato will deliver nine times the iron as a conventionally grown tomato. So even though the organics might be more expensive, it's worth, <laughs> it's worth it. So a mineral deficiency. But there's more to the mineral deficiency. There are stimulants that people are taking today that unbeknownst to them are leaching the minerals. One is sugar. And I'm not talking about the sugar cane plant, it's high in minerals but the pure crystallized acid that's extracted from the sugarcane plant is totally deficient in minerals. It's a pure acid. And when it goes into the body, the body sees it as a toxin and so it draws on its own minerals to calm that toxin down. It is said that sugar leaves our body better dressed than when it went in. It went in naked and it comes out dressed with our minerals, specifically magnesium and calcium. Two very important minerals for the function of the heart. Calcium contract, cause contracts, magnesium relaxes. Also for the bones. The bones are made up of minerals. So what else causes a leaching of the minerals? A leaching of the minerals happens with caffeine. Do you know, it is Australia's darling, but I think it's uh, America's darling too, is that right? <laughs> something they love. <laughs> people say to me, do you drink coffee, Barbara? I say, no, I just watch the people suffer. Day one, Misty Mountain Health Retreat. 
You see, caffeine causes a disruption in the neurotransmitters in the brain, and so the body adapts to that disruption, and then you come to the health retreat and there's no caffeine, then, then the adaptation process to cope with the lack or, or the disruption, it now gets flooded and that causes the headache. We see more people suffer from caffeine withdrawals than any other withdrawal. I think I've got a new microphone here. Yeah? interrupt this for a moment. Just for a moment. Then we'll get... Hopefully... And just flip it on the back. Thank you. Testing one, two, three. Okay, we're on the other side now. Okay, thank you. Back with sugar, sugar not only leaches minerals, sugar also damages the DNA. How does it do that? Sugar causes a blood sugar level rise very, very quickly. It's like a dump of glucose into the blood. And so a co corresponding amount of insulin is released. See, high glucose demands high insulin. And, a, and so very quickly, the blood sugar levels are brought down because they were too high, now they're too low. And so the person feels a bit woozy and they have a bit more sugar, then they go up too high. So there's this constant whiplash, which wears pancreases out. So now we have a weakened pancreas gene. They don't tell you that on the sugar packet, do they? What about caffeine? It not only leaches the minerals, but it also causes a disruption in the neurotransmitters in the brain. It's not the one cup of coffee, but it's day after day after day after day after month after year. It causes a disruption in the neurotransmitters in the brain. This also causes damage in the DNA. And so when, when parents, before they conceive, are eating a lot of sugar, they can give birth to a child who has a tendency to diabetes. And if you've got a couple eating a lot of, or taking a lot of caffeine in chocolate, in tea, in coffee, in... Co ah, I think I've lost my voice, I've got it back again. They're all high caffeine drinks. And by the way, what do they all come along with? High amounts of sugar. And so those, that couple can give birth to a child that has a tendency to uh, autism, uh, attention deficit syndrome, hyperactivity because of the disruption in the neurotransmitters weakening that, that, that gene. What also causes a leaching of minerals is alcohol. Children are being born today with fetal alcohol syndrome to parents that have two drinks a week. And some, some are advising a drink a week or two drinks a week, but even that much can cause damage in the DNA. Also tobacco, children are being born today with less alveoli in the lungs, with holes in the honeycomb shape around the alveoli in the lungs because of the parents' uh, habits. Now, one of the first things I said to you was that a lot of people are sick through ignorance, isn't that true? And one of the deceptions about these things is the first cup of coffee doesn't cause a major disruption to the neurotransmitters in the brain, but a continual does. And the first dose of sugar doesn't do it, but a continual does. <laughs> and the first cigarette doesn't give you lung cancer, but the continual does. But what we're specifically talking about now is what's causing damage in the DNA. What also causes damage in the DNA is MSG, monosodium glutinate. It causes the nerve cells in the tongue to overfire, and when they overfire, 
you've got another disruption in the brain cells. Our brain runs according to precision balance. Tomorrow morning I'll be talking about this at 11 o'clock. Precision balance. So anything that throws that balance out is potentially causing danger. But when it continually throws it out, that's when it starts to, to have an effect on the DNA, the genes that are given through to the next generation. Be careful of this one. They're, they're calling it names that even sound healthy now. Uh, natural flavour enhancer. That almost sounds healthy, doesn't it? But it's MSG. Also chemicals. We've got to get the chemicals out of our homes, out of our clothes, out of our toothpaste, out of our, out of our shampoo. There are many hidden ways that the chemicals are coming into the body. And little by little, like the dripping tap on a stone, that's the deception. Do you know, the Bible talks about the great deceiver in Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. It says, and the great, that, uh, that old dragon was cast out, that great, that great dragon was cast out, that old deceiver called the devil and Satan, which has deceived the whole world. In so many ways, in our shampoos, in our, in our food, in our clothing, in so many ways. But his most powerful act is these little deceptions, little by little by little, without us even realising it. That's why the only hope of better things is the education of people in the right principles. It's important to become aware of where the chemicals are. Also, and this is a surprise to many, is mould. Have you, have you seen what the Bible says about mould? In the, in the uh, Old King James, it's called mildew. And if there's mildew, well, actually, the NIV is called mildew. In the Old King James, it's called leprosy. Leprosy in the house. But the uh, NIV, it's called mildew. So what's mildew? It's mould. And in the, in the old version, it's called green and yellow strakes. That, that sounds a bit mouldy, doesn't it? That's what happens when we leave the lentil stew in the fridge and forget about it for a couple of weeks. And then the Bible talks about leprosy in the clothes. It talks about leprosy in the house and it says, clean up the house, regrout it with mortar, lock it up, and after two weeks get the priest to come back, who was the authority, and if it's there again, the whole house has to be destroyed. That's how God sees mildew or mould. It's toxic. And if it's in the clothes, he said, burn them. But what I find interesting is leprosy on the skin, if you do the same word, it's in the NIV, it's uh, mould on the skin. But of course, the NIV calls it um, infectious skin disease. <laughs> But it's the same word for the house and the clothes and the skin. And if you go into a medical dictionary, you will find that um, the prefix for um, leprosy is myco, M-Y-C-O, which is basically a mould waste. So be careful of the mould. Another thing is um, drugs. Ellen White says drugs never cure disease, they just change the form and location, and there's your side effects. She doesn't say drugs shouldn't be used in a crisis. Absolutely, in a crisis, a drug can save a life. She says drugs never cure disease. That means the ongoing. Yes, it might help in a crisis, but then after the crisis is over, then we need to stop and look at how did this come to be? Page 127, Ministry of Healing, Ellen White says, in case of sickness, the cause should be ascertained because there is always a cause. To say it's just you or it just happened, that defies basic science. To every action, there's an equal and an opposite reaction. Ascertain the cause. How do you ascertain the cause? You look at the history. And you also look at the eight laws of health and how that person is keeping to them because the next one is unhealthful conditions changed. So conditions changed. Maybe they got out of get out of the mouldy house. Maybe they got to change jobs because of the exposure to chemicals or moles, or maybe high amounts of electromagnetic field, and that's another one that can interfere with the D DNA. It's not electromagnetic field, so to speak, because we are electrical people. It's the excess. 
and the electromagnetic field coming off the devices, and I'm sure it doesn't surprise you to know this, is not the same electromagnetic field in the cell. So please, don't put them on your body, have them in a bag. I was reading of a breast surgeon who found that a lot of young women are getting breast cancer in the breast where they put the mobile phone in their bra. You can even buy a sports bra now that has a pocket in it to put the phone. And they also found that when young girls, say adolescents, teenagers, putting the laptop on their lap, let's fast forward to when they are in their 30s, 47% miscarriage in the girls that had the laptop on their lap. That's every day, every day. So protect the family jewels, men and women. The worst place to put your laptop is on your lap. <laughs> put it up there, put it on the table, and sorry, a pillow is no protection. That's why we should not sleep with our phone. 80% of Americans do. Pillows, no protection, get it out of the bedroom. In fact, our bedroom should be an electromagnetic free zone. So charge your phones, your iPads, your computers in the next room. So let's look at Ellen White says, she says, ascertain the cause, unhealthful conditions changed, wrong habits corrected. Habits corrected, then nature is to be assisted in her efforts to expel impurities and re-establish right conditions back in the system. So nature assisted. And how do you know how to assist nature? You listen. If something works, do it. If it doesn't work, don't do it. But what I want to come back to is the role of DNA in disease. And I trust by seeing this that you can see that though genetics loads the gun, lifestyle can pull the trigger. So can you heal DNA damage? Well, the first step is to stop the cause. And if you consider what glues us together, it's minerals, minerals. Minerals can help to heal the DNA. And the structure is 50%, the structure of every cell in the body is 50% fat and 50% protein. So when we're eating a balanced diet, the way God meant us to do, as we see in the Garden of Eden where he said, uh, Genesis 1.29, he said, the seed to you it shall be for meat. So he said, I, behold, I've given you every herb-bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth. What's a herb-bearing seed? There's all your grains. What's a herb-bearing seed? There's all your legumes. There's your seeds, pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds. And every tree, and the which of the trees a fruit-bearing seed? There's your nut. Excellent forms of fiber, proteins, and fats. And that's what the cell needs to function properly. So you can see lack of minerals because the soil lacks, lack of fat and protein. And by the way, one of the devil's best deceptions was telling people they don't need fat. If the cells are 50% protein, 50% fat, whether you're 48 kilo, oh, I've got to go to pound, whether you're 100 pound or 300 pound, this is the membrane around the cell, but not the brain cell. The brain cells 70% fat, and that fat is necessary to protect those brain cells. There are fats that kill and there are fats that heal, and the fats that kill are the altered fats, but not the fats that came from the hand of the Creator, in your nuts and your seeds. And the two oils that have been used traditionally are coconut oil and olive oil. If you're not sure about olive oil, get a concordance and do a Bible study of olive oil in the Bible. <laughs> And you'll see that God sanctions the use of olive oil. They're concentrated foods. We don't need much, but we need a little bit. And because the brain is 70% fat, the membrane around the brain cell is 70% fat, can you see the great deceiver? What part of the body does he want to take down first? Brain. Is the brain. Absolutely, the brain. We had a, a midwife do our program, and she was in her 70s, and she'd She'd done midwifery in Africa for 40 years. She said at one point they found the babies were not developing, so they investigated. And they found out that the mothers were watering down the powdered milk. And when they watered down the powdered milk, they were watering down the fat content. So the myelin sheath, which is the fatty sheath around the nerve cell, it wasn't not developing properly because it wasn't getting enough fat. Do you know one of the fattiest foods on the planet is breast milk? 
especially in that first two months of life because that developing brain must have it. Let's go to the other end of the scale. Let's go to people in their 60s, 70s, 80s. Have you read about Alzheimer's in the Bible? I haven't. It's only Nebuchadnezzar, but he, he revived, didn't he? A brain's deteriorating because of lack of fat at the other end of the, of the scale. But what I'd like to look at, I'd like to look at what is mold, because this is a very misunderstood substance. And we're going to have a look at the, where it sits in microorganisms. There are 10 times more microorganisms in the human body than cells. And these microorganisms are everywhere, and they're, and they're nothing for us to be afraid of. God made them, and they are everywhere. And they have a role. And their role is the proper functioning of the human body. And did you know that there's 10 times more microorganisms in our gastrointestinal tract than anywhere else in the body? Does that mean we're more plant than animal? These microorganisms, when the balance is correct, contribute to the proper running, not only of the body, but of plants, of animals, of creatures, of the whole of the planet. But whenever cell damage happens, God designed these microorganisms with the ability to change roles. If cell damage happens, these microorganisms now change form. They become the cleanup team. One microbiologist said to me, oh, we call them the garbage collectors. That's what they are. That's what they do. This cleanup team or garbage collectors, they clean up the mess from the cell damage and their name is bacteria. That is what bacteria is, that's what it does. It's an opportunist organism. And you'll find a lot of that where you find a lot of waste, am I right? <laughs> Absolutely. As the environment changes, they change. They now become the exterminators. So what's the exterminator's name? The exterminators are the yeast and the fungus. Dr. Robert Young, in his book, uh, Sick and Tired, he likens fungus to virus. They both need a host. They've got similar functions. Interesting. As the environment changes, so do the microbes. They now become the undertakers. So what's an undertaker? An undertaker takes away dead things. So what's the undertaker's name? That's the mold. That's the final stage. What I have drawn for you here is the cycle of life. This is the carbon cycle. This is the cycle that brings matter back to dust. And what does the preacher say in the funeral? Ashes to ashes dust to dust. He's referring to what's about to happen in the coffin. The matter is about to be brought back to dust. In Genesis 3.19, the Bible says we come from dust, we go back to dust, we're dust. And there's that lovely verse in Psalm 103 where he says, where it says, he knows our frame, he remembers that we are dust, precious dust. <laughs> so precious that the God of heaven gave his life for us, but dust. It's the cycle of life, or the carbon cycle. And a basic law of science states nothing is created and nothing is destroyed. It just changes form. That's why we have compost bins, isn't it? To bring the scraps and the matter back to dust. Florence Nightingale do this, very famous nurse. Her story is very interesting. And Pasteur, Louis Pasteur's theory was germs cause disease. And when she read of Louis Pasteur's theory, she said, this is the theory of a man of a very unstable mind. She said, germs don't cause disease, they're the result. Hmm? They're the result of unhealthful conditions. Today I talked about how I have helped quite a few people who've stood on rusty nails. Don't they have to have antibiotics? Don't they have to have a tetanus shot? No. Because we create an environment, once they've stood on the rusty nail, that, that this can't live there. 
How do we do it? Well, the Bible says in Leviticus 17, 11, that the life of the flesh is in the blood. The blood is the healer. What does the blood carry? It carries life-giving oxygen. It carries nutrition. It carries water. So you've got to supply good amounts of oxygen. How do you do that? You breathe through your nose. Mouth is not for breathing. Mouth is for talking, singing, whistling, eating, blowing wind instruments. That's what mouth's for, not for breathing. Nose is for breathing. Nose purifies the air, humidifies the air, warms the air, pressurizes the air, gets it perfect for the lungs. Many people have lung problems because they mouth breathe. When they mouth breathe, they breathe dirty air into the lungs. Mm -hmm. So if you're a mouth breather, it's time to train your body out of it. Tomorrow I'll show you how you can rewire your brain. How do you do that? Tape up your mouth. Well, you don't have to go tape, you can just go tape. So you, you can if you need to. In fact, the Indian women traditionally, when they took their babies off the breast to sleep to lay down, they would press their lips together just for a few minutes to train their babies into nose breathing. Breathing through the mouth can be likened to drinking from a stagnant pool compared to drinking to pure rainwater. That's, that's your difference. Be mindful of your nose because your, your blood and your cells need oxygen. So make sure you breathe through your nose. Nutrition, make sure you're giving nourishing food to your body so your blood will be the life of the flesh. Make sure you're drinking adequate water, sorry Coke, Cordial, juice, sorry, it's not water. How clean would your body be if you washed it in juice? If you washed it in tea or coffee, not very clean. So for the life of the flesh to be in the blood, we must supply what it needs to be the life of the flesh. Florence Nightingale, when she read of Louis Pasteur's theory that germs cause disease, she said, this is the theory of a man of a very unstable mind because her story is interesting. She was asked to go to Scutari. Scutari is the port where the wounded were being taken in the Crimean War. So the war was up here in Crimea. Yeah, forgive my crude drawing, but just to illustrate, there's the Black Sea. The wounded were put in boats and taken down the bottom to Scutari. And Scutari was the hospital. It was ex-army Turkish barracks. A war correspondent went to Scutari to, to report on the war and he was shocked at what he found. 50% of the young men that actually made it, and that trip was pretty bad when there was a storm, 50% of the young men that, men that made it to Scutari were dying in the hospital. It was filthy. So he went back and, he, and the newspaper article said, did we raise our young men to rot? in these conditions so very quickly the British government had to do something and they asked Florence and 35 nurses to go to Scutari to see what she could do. She was horrified. There was raw sewage in the corridors. The doctors were not washing their hands between operations. The food was big vats of water with bits of rotten meat in it. And the doctor said to Florence, this is men's business, you're not coming into this hospital. So she quickly contacted the British government and said, can you set up a sanitary commission to come and have a look? <laughs> and then another shipload of wounded came in and doctor said, all right, you can come in, they're already overloaded. So Florence got her nurses to just start scrubbing and cleaning. And the sanitary commission came along. Let me draw you the hospital. Here was the hospital. And it was in a swamp. And there was a dead horse in the swamp. Legs up for dead. And a dead dog. And the men were drinking that water. It's unbelievable that the death rate was only 50%. What an incredible body we live in with its inbuilt ability to heal itself when you give it the right conditions. 
And so very quickly, the Sanitary Commission cleaned up, they got men to clean up the area. Inside, Florence started to clean. She asked her father, who was a very wealthy Englishman, through a few inheritance, she got a shipload of clean linen, clean bandages. And a cook cannot heal without nourishment. Within two months, the death rate went from 50% to 2%. That's incredible. That's why we can't forget Florence Nightingale. This was 80 years before antibiotics. Incredible. When she came back to London 14 months later, she was hailed as a heroine. But she did not like that. She did not feel that she was. So she changed her name to Mary Smith, went down the black gang back gang plant and went home. They said to her later, why did you do that? She said, I'm not a heroine. All I did was increase hygiene, sanitation and nutrition. Doesn't that sound like that? All I did, she said, was increase hygiene. That's personal hygiene. Keep the body clean. Wash the clothes. She found one man that had his battle clothes on two weeks after he'd been admitted to hospital. You see, these bacteria and fungus, they're just opportunist organisms. They were out of control. All Florence Nightingale did was turn the tap off. And if you don't turn the tap off, you're still going to be mopping up in the other corner. That's why ascertaining the cause is square one. Finding out the history, square one. Why are these things so? I was consulting with a man in Melbourne once. I said, what do you do for a job? He said, I'm a private investigator. I said, so am I. <laughs> we should all be private investigators. Start with the person in the mirror. Start writing your history. You'll be surprised how you'll start to see links. Because the curse causeless shall not come. Things don't, don't happen. It's, it's not true. And how many people have a group of symptoms, they're given a label, now they live the label. When people come to me and say, the doctor's given me three months to live, I said, have you rejected that one? Because our cells are very obedient to our mind. And if the mind says you've got three months, you know what the cells say? Okay, okay. Reject. That's why I noticed that the eighth law of health is trust in divine power, trust in God. Trust in the body that he gave you with this inbuilt ability to heal itself. Even if you have inherited some weak genes, you need never go there. <laughs> Genetics loads the gun, but it is lifestyle that pulls the trigger. They're those laws of health, those basic laws. I'm ever looking for books to explain the laws in more detail. More detail. I want more detail. More detail so that I can adhere to these commandments, diligently hearken and do that which is right in his sight. And who's the winner? We are. <laughs> it's nice living in a body that works, and many don't. But notice with the germ theory and the gene theory, it's taking away all responsibility for what ha for, from us. Is that right? It's not me, it's the germ that jumped on me. Ah, oh, it's not me, it's in my genes. Because God's, God didn't say that's the cause of disease. What did he say? If you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God and do that which is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all of his statutes, he said, I will put none of these diseases upon you that I put upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. But we've got to do our part. No wonder... In Romans 12, verse 1, God said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, and it is by his mercies, isn't that right? It is by his mercies, that you present your bodies living sacrifice. Don't wait till it's well. Give it to him now, because he's the one that can heal you. Present your bodies living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And the reason why it is such a reasonable service is because we are the winners. We're the, the ones that are living in this house. Be not conformed to this world. And we don't have to wonder for a moment how the world lives. It's right out there. <laughs> it's in your face. 
Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Who do you prove it to? You prove it, first of all, to yourself. In Hebrews 12, chapter 1, it says, Seeing therefore that we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Who are the witnesses? Uh, the people in our home. <laughs> they know you better than anyone, is that right? Uh, your children, you can't put anything over them, can you? Your neighbours, your workmates, the people you see once a year, people you see once a week. There's more witnesses. Let's go outside the world to other worlds that are watching because you know the devil's accusation is they can never do it. Well, when I hear that, I want to prove him wrong. Yep. Let's come back. There are more witnesses. This time, let's go inside the body. Let's go to the cells. Did you know that your hair, your skin, <laughs> your bones, they're all an illustration of how you're living. But again, many people are not aware of the little things that are coming in to break down this body, like the dripping tap on a stone. I think it takes about 10,000 drips to get a dent, is that right? Little by little by little. And God said in First, Thessal in First Corinthians three sixteen and seventeen, He says, "No, you're not. That ye are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwells in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Have you read? And I've just been reading recently about Solomon's temple." you know there was to be no hammer sound no nail sound at all in that temple it was all prepared away over here and then carefully brought to the temple the body says no you're not that ye are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwells in you if any man defile the temple of God him shall God destroy for the temple of God is holy which temple ye are we need to know what defiles do you know it's not hard today you got google is that right if you're on a medication, Google it. Ooh. <laughs> I was in Keffin Lee, Wales last year. I was speaking at a conference there. And they said, quick, Barbara, this lady's having a panic attack. So I went over and she said, <laughs> you know, the first thing you do, close the mouth. Doesn't sound nice to say shut your mouth, does it? <laughs> Please close your mouth. <laughs> and then remember LSD. Do you remember LSD? Long, slow, deep. Through the nose and out through the nose. Did you know that when you breathe out through your mouth and not through your nose, you lose too much carbon dioxide and you need the carbon dioxide for the oxygen transfer to get the oxygen into the cell? Use your nose, not your mouth. Your mouth's for talking, singing, kissing, <laughs> eating. <laughs> That's your mouth. I said, breathe deeply. Breathe very deeply. And I touched her. Touch is a wonderful thing. Oh, I didn't like it when COVID said you couldn't touch each other. Oh, I actually didn't obey. Touch. Touch. We don't need to be fair of these. They, they only prosper when they're getting well fed. <laughs> I said, breathe deeply. Massage. Breathe deeply. Doterra, are you familiar with doTERRA essential oils? They have a little peppermint beadlet. You put that on your tongue and after 10 seconds, <laughs> she calmed right down. It only took about two or three minutes. Everyone that was there went, whoa. She went, whoa, that's never happened to me. I've never come out of it so quickly. I said, what do you usually do? And she got a medication out of her pocket. So I quickly Googled it, side effects, and I showed her. She said, I've got all of those. Mm. There are some medications that cannot be stopped immediately. There are some medications that have to be eased off. The way you do it is you implement the life. Breathe through your nose. Get into that sunshine every day. When I saw that sun shining today, I ran outside because I know that those ultraviolet light through my eyes will reset my body clock. And I was wide awake from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. this morning. 
trying to train my body back into it. But I know last night will be the worst night. It'll get better. <laughs> I read a book and a half last night. <laughs> but I slept from 8.30 to 2. That's pretty good. And then 6 to 8. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, 5, in everything give thanks. Is that right? If you can't sleep, you know what you say? Thank you, Father, I can't sleep. Now I can talk to you. Get to know those laws. Get to know them intimately. The law of abstinence means not taking anything into the body that will harm it and taking in moderation the good things. Learn what hurts. I've given you a bit of a list there. <laughs> some of them are a surprise, some of them I don't think are a surprise. Go to bed early. I read a book by a British neurologist called Why We Sleep. Whoa, did that open my eyes on sleep. Not negotiable, eight hours. Now, if you're not doing eight hours, you can train yourself into that. And Rome wasn't built in a day. Little by little, you can train yourself into it. And there, is one, there are two things that will stop you sleeping. One is getting annoyed with the fact that you can't sleep. <laughs> and two is letting your eyes look at your phone. <laughs> That's why it has to be out of the bedroom. <laughs> Way out of the bedroom. Exercise every day. Every day. We're training for an event far more important than the Olympic Games. We're training for the end of the world and the soon coming of our saviour. And this world is suffering from lack of testimonies of the true God of heaven. We need an army. We need an army ready to take the gospel for the world. Preach the gospel and sometimes use words, is that right? Your life, your life is your biggest testimony. Every day exercise, work out what works for you. Water, sorry, not tea, coffee, Coke, cola, no, Dr. Pepper, no, juice, no, water, and water only. Start early, little by little by little all through the day, and you'll be able to get to your eight glasses. Proper diet, there's no mystery on the proper diet, is a plant-based diet. I was at a function recently, and they had a, it was in Kevin, Kevin Lee in Wales, actually, and they had a carrot cake dessert. And I said, oh, that looks nice. Then they had this white fluff on top. And I said, but what's that? They said, oh, it's vegan, Barbara, it's vegan. I said, I know coconut cream, I know cow's cream, but what's that? <laughs> then they got this spray can of this white fluff that came out. Well, do you know chemicals are vegan and sugar's vegan? I said, no, thanks. <laughs> no, thank you very much. So I don't call myself vegan anymore. I'm sorry, but it seems to have a bad name because of some of the products that are apparently vegan. So I call myself plant-based. I'm plant-based. I eat plants. Trust God. Trust him. Take him at his word. Do you remember what he said? He said, if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and do that which is right in his sight and give ear to his commandments and keep all of his statutes. He says, I will put none of these diseases upon thee that I'll put upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Did he put them on the Egyptians? Actually, they put them on themselves. It was just cause and effect. And that's why Ellen White says, disease is an effort of nature to free the system from conditions that arise because of a violation of the laws of health. So when someone comes to us who is not well, you know, the first thing we do, we look at the laws. And the laws quickly reveal, the history usually reveals the cause. Uh, also, when you look at the laws, you start to see the conditions. When you look at the laws, you start to see the habits. But what we find is teaching. When you teach people a better way. One lady said to me, Barbara, we just want to thank you. I said, what for? She said, you didn't put us on the scales and tell us we needed to lose weight. I said, well, did I need to? No, no, no. God said, let your speech be always with grace. Do you know the first character trait of God is mercy. Have mercy. We're not the judge. He is the judge. I trust I have successfully shown you that germs 
and genes are not the true cause of disease. The true cause of disease is many, many little things. And in each case, very, very different. Are there any questions before we close? We have given, I think, 12 minutes to questions. And if you have a question, I'll repeat it for the recordings, yes? That's right. What would you say to someone that has been diagnosed with Lyme's disease? Well, there's the cause. It's a tick. And did you know that ticks haven't always had Lyme's disease in them? Did you know that there's an island called Plum Island where it was developed by an ex-Nazi scientist? So we've got an enemy out there who wants to destroy us. But I have found when given the right conditions, it can be conquered. So what are the conditions? There are essential herbs, there's frankincense oils, there's oregano essential oils, there's also fever baths. My granddaughter had Lyme's disease and she started to have slight seizures. This is when she was about 10. She's 18 now and no more seizures, no more Lyme's. So she healed it through diet, lifestyle, water therapies and herbs. So you could almost say that person got Lyme's disease as an accident. You know, what's the accident? The tick, tick bit them. In Australia, Lyme's disease, disease is almost not known. There's a few cases, not many. Yes. For polycystic kidney disease, um, one, it's very important to look at the cause, and sometimes. When you look at the cause, it can be chemical exposure, it can be mold exposure, it can be uh, not drinking enough water, it can be an improper diet, it can be a few things. But now we're to the point where we've got this serious condition. And so um, we have seen a few people who were told they had to go on dialysis come and do our program, stop the caffeine, start drinking more water, start having a natural diet, stop the, the five allergens and they've not needed to go on dialysis. We've seen that quite a few times. So again, it's just getting back to giving the body the right conditions and watching what the body responds to. So um, also, the cysts on the kidneys, they can be broken down by castor oil compressors. And there are specific herbs that, that target the, the kidneys. I find it fascinating that the herbs that God made have specifics for, you know, you can get the kidneys and you can have herbs specifically for different parts of the kidneys. And some of the best kidney herbs are celery, parsley, <laughs> corn silk. So it's, um, again, it can be quite simple. But remember with the herbs, it's little by little by little, every day, several times a day, let it start to do its work. Yes? Okay, so again we look at the cause and one of the a big contributing factor today is a hormonal imbalance because high oestrogen opposes, pardon? Question. Sorry, um, thyroid disease. What's the cause of thyroid disease? It can have a few causes but one of the biggest causes today is a hormonal imbalance because high oestrogen opposes thyroid function. So why would people have a hormonal imbalance? In the molecular structure of oestrogen, there's a phenyl ring, P-H-E-N-O-L. And you'll find in many plastics today, there's nonyl phenyls and there's bisphenol A's. And so the plastics, our exposure to plastic, when I was a little girl, all the milk came every day in glass bottles. And the cereal was in greaseproof paper and we wrapped our sandwiches in greaseproof paper, but we're uh, a wash with plastic today. Ladies, particularly, beware of your underwear, polyester, nylon, and acrylic. That has an effect on your body like plastic. So please go for your natural fibers. And again, it's just little by little by little, all these come together. So it's balancing the hormones. I have a lecture online called 
hormones that you can see how you can balance the hormones. So that's almost square one. Get that estrogen down because it opposes thyroid function. And Dr. David Brownstein, you might have heard of him. He's written a book called Iodine, Why You Need It and Why You Can't Live Without It. And he shows that over and under active thyroid are often iodine deficient. So iodine is basically the main food for the thyroid. But the thyroid needs selenium to convert iodine into thyroxine. And mercury has an affinity for selenium. So if a person's eating a lot of fish, a person's got a lot of mercury fillings in their mouth, their selenium levels will be down so they can't convert their iodine into thyroxine. So again, we're looking in they're basically environmental poisons, aren't they, that are coming in to cause these disruptions. So once all of those are put in place um, and the laws adhered to, then thyroid function can improve. Yes? If someone's had a total thyroidectomy, they will be on thyroxine for the rest of their life because they haven't got a thyroid to make thyroxine, unfortunately. Yes? So the question is, if you've had a huge tubal ligation and you have a major hormonal imbalance, can you do anything else other than the yam cream? I find that the eight laws of health, if they're adhered to, the effect of the Anna's Wild Yam Cream is far more effective. And if it's a major imbalance, it can take time. In uh, Galatians 6 verse 9, the Bible says, let us not be weary in well-doing in due season we will reap if we faint not and Ellen White says page 127 of the Ministry of Healing that nature's process of healing and upbuilding is gradual and to the impatient it seems slow so there's a time factor <laughs> there's a time factor most people don't get sick overnight and they don't get well overnight there's, there's a time factor there is a herb called Dong Quai D-O-N capital Q-U-A-I and that is a herb that can certainly herb help to boost. A uh, chase tree or Vitex, it helps, but the Anna's Wild Yam Cream second ingredient is Vitex. You'll find it in there. Yes? What is the cause of treatment of ADHD? ADHD? ADHD levels have skyrocketed since children were vaccinated at the rate they're being vaccinated today. You know, they have more than 10 times the amount of vaccines in the first year of life that they had even 20 years ago. And the vaccines contain neurotoxins. They contain aluminium and formaldehyde, which are both neurotoxins. In 1998, the mercury was banned from the childhood vaccines because of the clear link between uh, mercury and these neurological problems. So one of the main causes is, uh, is the childhood vaccines. See, if the human body was designed to heal itself, it does not need to be vaccinated. Yes? What are some of the things you can do to offset what chemo does to your body? Unfortunately, chemotherapy is a very toxic poison and it's very difficult to totally recover from that. But... Uh, Peak nutrition is important. That's where your vegetable juices can, um, can play a part and organic food and keeping to the laws. Um, and also you would go on symptoms. A lot of people have peripheral neuropathy. They lose the feelings in their extremities. So, and today we looked at how the um, cane pepper compressors can start to revive feeling in those areas. It's very important too to keep the body warm Never let the extremities get cold. And if someone has peripheral neuropathy, sometimes they don't know their feet are cold. So they have to keep an eye on that. Yes? What about the treatment of ADHD? What about the treatment of ADHD? There's a very interesting book called Stop Autism Now by Dr. Bruce Fife. This book isn't just about autism. It's about um, 
attention deficit syndrome as well. And he shows that you will get 50% improvement stopping those five allergens that I talked about earlier. That's your peanuts, dairy, wheat, oats, and refined sugar. He says 50% improvement, but it can take two months because you can eat a slice of bread, it'll be out of your body in 24 hours, but the effect can remain for much longer. Um, so it's eliminating those foods. And so then people say, well, what do we eat? Well, millet is a nice alternative to oats. Some people can handle oats quite well. Some people can't, can't. But if there's any sort of medical problem, the oats are best eliminated. And cow's milk's very good milk for baby cows, as long as it's not homogenised and pasteurised, that is. And yet that's what they give to humans. People say, what milk do you drink? I say, I'm weaned. I eat food. I don't drink milk. Milk is for babies. And Dr. Bruce Fife also shows how supplementing with coconut oil. You see, coconut oil is high in medium-chain fatty acids, and then when, when that breaks down in the liver, it breaks down to ketones, and ketones are neurohealers, neuroprotectors. So supplementing with the coconut oil can help to heal neurological problems. And there is a herb that's a nerve nourisher. So all nerve problems respond to this herb. It's, it's specific nerve nourisher. It's called St. John's wort. The only time St. John wort cannot be taken is if a person is on mind, mind altering medication, like uh, antidepressant panic attack medication. Yes? Is there anything that an individual can take for being allergic to peanuts? The number one cause that most people are allergic to peanuts is because peanuts mould very, very quickly. So it's the mould in the peanuts. It's, it's, um, it's aspergillus, the mould is called aspergillus, and the mould waste from aspergillus is called aflatoxin. I don't know if you read the book China Study, but in his book he shows very clearly how the aflatoxin is causing a lot of problems. One lady said to me, I'm allergic to strawberries, what can I do? And I said, don't eat strawberries. <laughs> Maybe once a year try a strawberry, your body will quickly tell you if you can have it or you can't. So you can theorise why these things are so, like I have just done, but if the body says don't, don't, don't do it. Yes? What can you do for someone that has lupus? The first thing is to implement those laws, look at the history, and sometimes, often, you can see some of the links that have, could have contributed to this. And some of the, one of the main causes for childhood illnesses today is the vaccines. And I don't know if you've ever um, listened to anything by Dr. John Clark. He links um, autoimmune diseases in 30s and 40s to the childhood vaccinations. So even though a child may not apparently um, react or appear to react to a vaccine, it doesn't mean that they haven't. It, the reaction can come years and years later. So again, it's stopping the cause, implementing the laws, uh, high nutrition and boosting the immune system. One of the best immune system boosters is to finish hot showers with cold. The good news is you don't have to have 10 seconds hot and 10 minutes cold. You can have 10 minutes hot and 10 seconds cold. But with every case, it's applying the laws to what the person can do, like exercise. Not everyone can run up and down hills. Not everyone can swim. You've got to adapt it to what suits you. Yes? How do you kill mould? The worst thing you can put on mould is bleach because when you put bleach with mould you create one of the most toxic substances. And my daughter told me about, she read in the newspaper a woman was cleaning a mouldy bathroom with bleach and all the windows were shut. They found her dead. I guess a lot of people kill mould with bleach but the windows are open or it's not that big so they don't apparently appear to have a reaction. But what bleach does is it kills mould, but it feeds fungus. So you've killed, you've killed the mould, but you've fed the next stage. 
So what kills mould? White vinegar. White vinegar will kill mould, and it, sorry, it'll kill fungus and mould, but it won't feed the next crop. So if you've got a mouldy area, wipe it over with white vinegar, but, but what, the best thing to do is spray it with white vinegar and quickly leave the room and come back 10 minutes later, it will all be dead, then you can wipe it up. But if you spray and wipe straight away, you, you will get the dust pores going into your skin, breathing them in. Once they're in, they're not easy to get out. And so once you've cleaned it with that, then you get a cloth with um, clove essential oil, which is a very strong fungal killer, and wipe it over. And then go to the telephone and get the plumber or the builder and find out why the mould is there, because it shouldn't be there. Maybe you have to chop some trees down that are near the house. Maybe you have to fix the plumbing. Maybe it's a leaking tap. But there's always a reason. So we need to find out why it is there. Yeah? I don't advocate taking vinegar by mouth. Vinegar, no, vinegar is probably one stage short of alcohol. So anything that uses vinegar, we just use lemon juice. So all our dressings are made with lemon juice. But uh, vinegar is very good to put on athlete's foot or tinea, you know, the toes. <laughs> you can use it topically. Yeah, yeah, you do hear that. But Dr. Robert Young, he did a study on vinegar and he showed that vinegar is acetaldehyde and acetaldehyde is a neurotoxin. And there are five places we can be exposed to acetaldehyde. Number one is alcohol. Another is, because uh, alcohol breaks down in the liver to acetaldehyde, a neurotoxin. Uh, vinegar is acetaldehyde. Car fumes give off acetaldehyde. Cigarette smoke gives off acetaldehyde, much smaller amounts. And if a person has a yeast presence in their body and they're eating a lot of sugars, um, the breakdown of that is alcohol broken down in the liver to acetaldehyde. So you can Google Dr. Robert Young and acetaldehyde or vinegar and you can look at the research papers he has on that. Yes? I will. It's set all dehyde. Yes. Can we heat up cooking oil? Can we heat up cooking oil? I suggest you. Um, have a look at my fat lecture on YouTube where I spend 50 minutes showing the molecular structure of fats. And the only fat that doesn't have open spaces and so sensitive to light, heat and oxygen is coconut. Coconut is a saturated fat. And that word saturated means that there are no empty spots. So whenever on the molecular structure there's an empty spot, then that's sensitive to light, heat and oxygen. So it's only the saturated fats that really should be heated. If I cook a, a lentil stew, I'll put the olive oil in right at the end. Now the olive oil is called a monounsaturated fat, means it's only got one empty spot. So it's not as volatile as the others, but it should st still should be bought as first cold pressed, extra virgin in a dark bottle, because it does have one empty spot. But polyunsaturated fats are actually the worst fats because poly means they have many, they have many open spaces. So they're incredibly volatile to light, heat and oxygen, thus destruction. The best way to get your polyunsaturated fats is to eat the seed and eat the nut. <laughs> Pardon? What is avocado in fats? Avocado has a some saturated and some monounsaturated. Um, there's a book called uh, Fats That Heal, Fats That Kill by Udo Erasmus, and he gives a breakdown of all the fats and the, the different molecular structures of them. Yes? Pardon? The best way to get probiotics is to eat sauerkraut, yogurt, miso, then you're getting it through your food. Yes? Into Candida, my book Self Heal by Design, and you can get that on Amazon. They were sold out.
to date, but five more boxes have gone in, so they should be available on Monday. So my book, Self Heal by Design, I explore um, what I've touched on tonight in a lot more detail. And in there, there are programs how you can conquer candida in your body. Yes? What's the best way to solve dementia? What's the best way to solve dementia? Slow down. Slow down? Dementia? Ah, oh, I've never heard of slow down dementia. Is, the, is slow down dementia, dementia slowed down? Oh, <laughs> no, but I do know that, that uh, the books um, Stop Alzheimer's Now has many uh, stories in there of people who have conquered dementia. It's a matter of being able to get it early. Uh, supplements help. Coconut oil is the best supplement. And your B vitamins, B vitamins are brain vitamins. And then your St. John's wort, which is your nerve nourisher. Yes? What about memory loss? Any cold what about memory loss? Short -term, short -term memory. There is a drug that's very effective at killing your memory, and they're all your cholesterol lowering medications. All cholesterol lowering medications, as their side effect, uh, dementia, Alzheimer's, memory loss, and muscle wasting. And if you uh, explore the issue of cholesterol, especially if you read the book uh, The Great Cholesterol Con by, he's a British physician <coughs> named Dr. Malcolm Kendrick. His book's called The Great Cholesterol Con because it is a total con. The great deceiver has deceived people into thinking cholesterol causes heart disease, but it does not. So what causes heart disease? It's damage to the arterial wall. So what causes damage to the arterial wall? Well, these all do a good job of damaging the arterial wall. So how many people in aged care facilities have memory loss because of the cholesterol lowering medication that they're on? But I've got some good news. If you're on cholesterol lowering medication and you stop immediately, there will be one side effect and that is your memory will return. So your brain, let's say you might have memory loss and yet you're not on cholesterol lowering medication, uh, keeping the brain well hydrated, keeping it well nourished and exercising that brain, memorise, learn new things every day and also um, do things that require the, the brain to manage you physically. So that's riding bikes, uh, skating. We need to see more grey people on the skateboard track. Okay. And, and skiing and, and physical things. And as a, as a massage therapist said to me, and this guy was 70, he said, do you know why most people fall and break? Because they're not fit. He said, I fall all the time, but I immediately right myself. So it's so important to keep the body physically fit, especially in the latter years. That's more important than even the developing years. Yes? Yeah, see the, that's right, that's right. The, Alzo the Alzheimer's was caused by metformin, that is, that is true. That's why it's a challenge to each one of us to diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord our God and learn what this body needs to, to function effectively and be able to ease off the medications because drugs never cure disease. Ellen White didn't say, Drugs don't cure disease. She said never. And you know, we, we have an old saying, never say never. Well, in this, you can say never. Again, they might manage a, in a crisis a situation, but they never cure disease. And they all have side effects. But I thank you for your attention tonight. Our time is up and we want a nice early night so our brains are bright and sparky tomorrow. So please um, bow your heads with me and we'll, we'll finish with prayer. Father in heaven, thank you so much for what you've given us. Thank you so much for bringing us here tonight. Thank you, Father, that you know us personally. You know how many hairs are on our head. You know our situation. You know our weaknesses. You know our strengths. You know our situation. The Bible says that you know the way that we take. And the Bible also says that you are able. Jude 24 says, Now unto him who is able...
to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his Father's glory with exceeding joy. It is your joy, we know, to present us without fault before your throne. And you and you only are able to do that. Thank you for that possibility. We pray these things tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen.